Hello, this is Jennifer Martinez, and today we're going to talk about the trig values of special angles. And the special angles that we're going to talk about is 30, 45, and 60 degrees. And in this chart, it shows all the six trigonometric values of these special angles. And if you notice, it shows the exact values. By the way, on a calculator, you can find the approximate values of these angles. In fact, you can find the approximate values of any angles but you cannot find the exact answers or the exact values of all angles. So that's why these special ones are important. So let's start with 45 degrees, the middle one. Here's my 45 degree angle. To find the trig values for an angle, I know I need to make a triangle. So I'm gonna make a right triangle. I always like to go down to my x-axis to make my triangle. We know this is 90 degrees. And because all triangles add up to 180 degrees, we know that this angle is also 45 degrees because 45 plus 45 plus 90, we know is 180, 180 degrees. So this must be 45 degrees also, which means this is an isosceles triangle. That means this value and this value are the same. So if I let this value be 1, then this value also better be 1. It doesn't really matter what you let the value be because we're talking about ratios. So if you let this be 2 and this be 2 and you're looking at tangent, that would be 2 over 2, which would be the same value. So I might as well just do 1 to make it easy. And then to find the value of the r, we can use the Pythagorean theorem because we know that x squared plus y squared better equal r squared. 1 squared, we know that 1 plus 1 better equal r squared. And 1 plus 1 we know is 2. So we take the square root of both sides. We know that r is equal to the square root of 2. And again, you don't need to worry about the plus or minus because the r is always positive. Here's the picture they have in the book of the same thing. Uh, 45, 45 degrees, 1, 1, square root of 2, um, which is what we got here. So now we can find the six trigonometric functions using the, this triangle. So let's start with sine, sine of 45 degrees. We know sine is by definition y over r, which if you remember is opposite over hypotenuse, whichever way you want to think of. If you want to look at the y over r over here, that would be 1. Oh, I didn't write that. That r was square root of 2. So you could see it would be 1 over square root of 2. And similarly, if you looked at, say, this angle, it would be 1 opposite over hypotenuse, square root of 2. By the way, it's not what they show here because we in, um, like to, or the book likes to, rationalize the denominator. In fact, when you enter on the computer, you'll always need to rationalize the denominator. So let's practice that. that. How do you do that? Well, you multiply top and bottom, if you remember from your algebra days, by square root of 2. So this would be square root of 2 over 4, which is just, well, I was going to write 2, but I guess I'll do one more step. Square root of 2 over square root of 4, which is just 2. Okay, now how do you find cosine? Oops. Cosine of 45 degrees is going to end up being the same thing because x is 1, right? x over r is the definition or adjacent of our hypotenuse. So that would be 1 over square root of 2 as well, which when you rationalize, you get square root of 2 over 2. And finally, tangent of 45 degrees. Tangent of 45 degrees we know is y over x, which is opposite over hypotenuse, which is going to be the y. The y we know is 1, and the x is 1. 1 over 1 is just 1. And you can see if you look at the 45 degrees, it is their first three values. Okay. Well, we can now look at the cosecant. So let's go ahead and do that. Cosecant of 45 degrees. We know that is the 1 over sine. So it's just r over y. So if we did 1 over it, we would just get the r, which is square root of 2, over 1. So it's just square root of 2. Same with the secant of 45 degrees, because that's r over x. 
So the r squared of 1 and the x is 1. So square root of 2, I mean, over 1. And finally, the cotangent of 45 degrees is x over y, which is 1 over 1, which is 1. So that's how you do 45 degrees. So let's scroll down and look at 30 and 60. The 30 and 60 we're going to do in one triangle. I have the triangle right here. We're going to use a 60, 60, 60 degree triangle, which adds up to 180. It's an equal lateral triangle. And the special values we're going to look at is 2 instead of 1, just to make it a little easier, because what we're going to do, the reason we use 2 is because we're going to cut this in half. And when you cut this in half, though mine doesn't look like it's cut in half, does it? When you cut this in half, you get 30 degrees here. You get the 30, 60 degree triangle. And by the way, we know this is 90, and the value of this is half of the 2, which is 1. So we just did 2, so we didn't have to use fractions. If I scroll down, you'll see a better picture of this, where it's cut in half 30 degrees. This is 1, the 90, 60, 30, and this is 2. We're going to look for the x value. So again, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem because we know that x squared plus y squared better equal r squared. And this time I'm going to let my, I guess, my y be 1, which is kind of weird, I realize. But we have x squared plus 1, the 2 legs squared, better equal the hypotenuse squared. So we get a 4 here, a 1. And if you subtract 1 from both sides, you get a 3. So take the square root of both sides. Again, you don't need the minus because this is a distance. So we know the x is equal to square root of 3. That is the triangle that we're looking at. So now, if again we look at sine of 30 degrees. Well, if we want to draw another picture like I had before with the x, y, and the and the 30 degree angle. So if we draw our triangle going down to our x, make this x and y. I know that doesn't look proportional, but please look at the other triangle across from the 30 degrees. Notice how across from 30 degrees, we know the opposite is going to be the 1. And the hypotenuse, the opposite, the 90 degree, we know is the 2. So therefore, the x better be square root, of 33, square root of 3. So if we now look at the sine, which by the way, if we scroll up, oops, is y over r. So the sine we know is y over r. So that would be 1 half the cosine of 30 degrees. We know is x over r. So that would be square root of 3 over 2 and the tangent of 30 degrees is equal to y over x, so that would be 1 over square root of 3. And then do not forget to rationalize the denominator, that is, so those are the three values of 30. So if you look at 30, you get 1 half, square root of 3 over 2, and square root of 3 over 3, which is what they got. Again, the um, cosecant of 30 degrees is going to be equal to 2 because it's 1 over or r over y and the secant of 30 degrees is going to be 2 over square root of 3 but again you need to rationalize let me draw a line there so that's going to be 2 square root of 3 over 3 and the um, tangent of 30 degrees, we know it's just going to be 1 over, oops, I meant the cotangent, didn't I? The cotangent of 30 degrees is going to be um, square root of 3 over 3. I'll let you do the same for the 60 degrees, if you can see how to get the 60, but just to get you started to get the 60 degree picture, we need to now look across from the 60 degrees. You actually can see that one a lot more easier because across from 60 degrees is square root of 3, right? The adjacent is 1, which is across from the 30, 
the hypotenuse is 2. And that would be the picture for 60 degrees. So it's good to memorize these three pictures, the 60 degrees, 33, 30 degrees, and the 45 degrees. And then you can come up with the last row there, all the six trigonometric functions of the 60 degrees. These are great to memorize. I would memorize again the three pictures instead of the chart. Hope that helps.